Coming up, how you can help authorities in Northwest Iowa find a missing man. Plus, we hear from the owners of the Sioux Falls Snow Leopards about how they're hoping to raise funds for the team. Good morning, this is Kelly Land on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. Authorities in Northwest Iowa are asking for the public's help in finding a missing Inwood man. In a post on its Facebook page, the Lyon County Sheriff's Office says this man was last seen in late February and has not returned home. His last known destination was Minneapolis. The car he was believed to be driving was found abandoned near Fergus Falls, Minnesota. If you have any information on where he is, call the Sheriff's Office at 712-472-8300. We now know the name of a woman who died in a crash just outside of Spearfish last week. Just after 1 o'clock Wednesday afternoon, a car was crossing Highway 85 when it collided with a second car in the intersection. The driver of the first vehicle, 68-year-old Mary Keats, was pronounced dead at the scene. The driver of the second vehicle, 78-year-old Barbara Bentz, was not hurt. South Dakota's Highway Patrol is investigating the crash. The South Dakota Highway Patrol is investigating a crash north of Yankton Friday that killed a 19-year-old woman. Investigators say the woman was southbound on U.S. Highway 81 when her car crossed the center line and crashed into a semi-truck. The woman was airlifted to a Sioux Falls hospital where she died. The truck driver had minor injuries. Sioux Falls police are investigating a Sunday morning shooting that sent a man to the hospital. Police say officers made contact with people inside a vehicle at 6 and Phillips around 1.30. Officers discovered one of the occupants of the vehicle had a gunshot wound to his leg. The man was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. So far, no one has been arrested. We hope to learn more information about the shooting at this morning's briefing by Sioux Falls Police. The suspect in a deadly Rapid City stabbing is pleading not guilty. Police say 30-year-old Barry Allman stabbed Lance Baumgarten in the chest at a Rapid City apartment last summer after getting angry with him. Oglala Sioux Tribal officers arrested Allman the next day near Wanbley. Allman is charged with second-degree murder. Turning to weather now, spring-like temps are settling in here in Kettle Land. Let's find out how warm it could get today with meteorologist Scott Munt. Good morning, Scott. All right, well, good morning, everybody. We are looking at those numbers today, probably into the 50s. We may have a couple of areas sneak in the lower 60s. But in the meantime, we'll also watch thicker cloud cover and chances for rain as we get into the late day hours across eastern and southeastern Kettle Land. That will start, and it, for some of us, it may not finish until we go through the day on Wednesday. And again, it looks like eastern, southeastern Kettle Land probably the best location to see the rainfall late today and again going into Wednesday. Otherwise, remaining above average for the rest of the week and going into the weekend. More details on your forecast with Brian Karstens coming up. Thanks, Scott. The fate of House Bill 1217, the transgender sports bill, could be decided on March 29th, the so-called veto day when lawmakers consider bills vetoed by the governor. Governor Nome tweeted Saturday from her governor's account that she's asking legislators to pass a new bill on veto day or she will call a special session. But Nome's actions are getting pushback from lawmakers. House Speaker Spencer Gosh, co-sponsor of the legislation, says Nome went too far with her style and form veto. Gosh questions whether Nome has the authority to make changes through that procedural tape move. Also, the Sioux Falls Sports Authority has released a statement saying, while we are generally supportive of Governor Nome's style and form veto of HB 1217, there are still some underlying concerns regarding the possible reaction of the NCAA should HB 1217 be amended in a manner as she suggests. Nome wants lawmakers to remove college sports from the transgender ban. She also wants to get rid of a requirement that students sign a written statement verifying their sex and whether they've taken certain medications. The Transformation Advocacy Project hosted a Let Kids Play rally in Sioux Falls Saturday to protest House Bill 1217. People gathered with signs and flags to show support for the state's transgender community and speak out against the legislation. The protesters called the bill discriminatory and raised questions about how the measure would be enforced if it becomes law. Later this morning, Governor Nome will be holding a press conference in Sioux Falls to announce a new initiative to defend fairness in women's sports. Governor Nome will be joined by four-time LPGA Player of the Year Nancy Lopez, former NFL football player Jack Brewer, and other athletes. It'll be held at the Hilton Garden Inn starting at 1030. Sioux Falls' first-ever professional women's football team is looking forward to taking the field this year. The Sioux Falls Snow Leopards are hosting an Easter-themed fundraiser 
to help pay for equipment to kick off their inaugural season. The football players themselves are filling the eggs with candy and toys um, and people can have a choice whether they want just candy or just toys or if they want to mix but um, we will be having the players deliver eggs to people's yards at night. Families have until March 29th to sign up for the fundraiser. The team is already planning to visit a handful of towns across the state and is excited to spread the word about the new team. An Aberdeen teenager has raised more than $120,000 to fight breast cancer. 17-year-old Jordan Phillips started sewing coffee cup sleeves in 2015 to raise the money. The project grew quickly and a charitable LLC called Cozies for the Cure was launched. Proceeds from the Cozies go to Susan G. Coleman. It's just been this incredible experience to be able to, you know, start as something so small and not even like have the idea of having a business or being able to give back on the scale that we're able to now. It's just absolutely incredible. I feel so grateful every single day. Phillips launched the project after her mother was diagnosed with breast cancer. And that's a look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Karstens. Brian? All right, clouds on the increase today across Kettle Land in the south first and then uh, working its way to the north here slowly over time. I still think today's weather forecast, pretty fair conditions with 50 degree weather. Easterly winds will help those clouds thicken up too. Here comes the rain, six o'clock this evening. We're watching that around Yankton Vermilion, much of Northwest Iowa. You'll notice between six and 9 p.m. it moves north. So Sioux Falls getting involved with more of that uh, toward midnight and after that, it looks like rain overnight uh, shifting to the north. Watertown getting involved by daybreak. And then tomorrow, steady rain. Northeast winds kind of blustery with the areas getting the rain. You're stuck in the 40s. And it looks like a few 50s still possible in northwest South Dakota tomorrow. So we're not talking about a system that's wrapping in a lot of cold air. If anything, it'll be just marginally cold enough for a few snowflakes here by, uh, we'll say Wednesday morning. Maybe Watertown the Northeast could see a little bit better chance of that. Uh, now, perspective on the rain projections up to an inch or maybe a little more in the Southeast. I think that's a pretty solid forecast. And those of you watching this in Aberdeen and Pier, it's going to be more of a, a push here to getting that moisture that far west and north. I think there's some chances of rain. We'll watch the very latest short term information coming in today. Uh, but right now, don't count on major amounts in those two locations. Sioux Falls, 55 the high today, 56 Mitchell. Tonight's low, 24 Rapid City. Rapid, by the way, could get a couple of spots of rain or snow tomorrow, but those will be kind of the hit and miss variety tomorrow. 50 degrees there. Sioux Falls stuck at 48. Then the seven-day forecast will start to wind that system down Wednesday morning. Then dry and 50-degree uh, weather for Thursday and Friday. And then a small chance of rain by Saturday. Aberdeen in the Northeast, we're looking at highs here. 50 on Tuesday, 49 on Wednesday. Middle 50s on Thursday. Chance of precipitation again by Saturday and 51. Pier, Central South Dakota, looking at 50-degree uh, weather again by the end of the week. And as advertised here, just watching those chances of rain tomorrow coming up to Pier. And I think also Rapid City will get that chance of hit and miss moisture tomorrow and then dry for a couple of days. A separate system by Friday and Saturday. More coverage online at KettleLand.com. Have a great day.